Hello everybody and welcome to another Transformers third party review up over on the K Electables channel. This has come from our good friends over at Show Z Store who have a variety of third and fourth party items in stock. First of all, I would like to thank Show Z for making this review possible and I would like to just draw attention to the artwork on Maverick's box. Now, the guy that does the artwork for these fan stores products is Johan, and I never see him credited on the box at all. I don't know if he's hiding his name somewhere in the product shots, but he should be credited because he does outstanding work. It's uh, Johan Vinci. Uh, I will include a link to his Facebook as well because the dude has got some crazy good skills and I just wish that they would kind of give credit where credit is due. And, you know, a lot of third parties have the uh, have the information on the designer, etc. On the box somewhere. Uh, fans toys, not so much. Uh, maybe they've got it on their site somewhere, I don't know. This is, of course, uh, Maverick, who is their interpretation of a Masterpiece-style Silverbolt. He's our second Silver bolt done in that kind of masterpiece scale and aesthetic. The first being Zeta's release, uh, who will be shown here in this video. The uh, box is pretty much what you would expect from a fan's toys box. It's just a big kind of outer shell with some polystyrene inside and some product shots of Maverick on the back. And here we have him out of his polystyrene prison. Now, before we get on the ins and outs of him, let's take a look at the accessories that he comes with. He comes with this kind of uh, disgruntled head which is quite easy to switch out so you just tilt the head slightly forward or back and this just slides onto a mushroom peg it's a good sculpt uh, fans toys always manages to deliver when it comes to their sculpts uh, i love the fact that they're now kind of redoing figures as well much to uh, some people's annoyance but they're kind of giving them a more cartoony look kind of tagging on to what sakara are doing with their plus series and we also get this face as well. Uh, although it does kind of scale up with Silver Bolt, it just doesn't strike me as a Silver Bolt expression there. But if this is Silver Bolt, I really don't see the need for it. I don't know what that would be referencing. Maybe the comics. But uh, who knows? Maybe somebody will let me know in the comments section below. We also get his weapon, which comes as is, nothing really out of the ordinary there. We get an instruction booklet and we also get Maverick's tech spec card with the little bio again and his current stats. Now taking a closer look at Silverbolt, there were a few tweaks you have to do out of the packaging, uh, much like we had to do with their Road King. Uh, first of all, where uh, the knee tabs, if you look, there's a small plastic tab on the back of that knee. That actually slides and tabs in to the knee pad, which holds everything in two position. The shoulders are a complete mess when you get them out of the package. That includes there's uh, some pictures here showing you what it looks like as it comes out. As you can see, it's really kind of all over the place and everything's set in the wrong position. But literally just uh, moving these pieces here around. This piece here swings down and rotates and comes up to the sides, tabbing in to the side of this torso. The shoulders actually kind of rock and latch in to keep them nice and close to this torso. And then with these panels here, this is going to go over. This will come down and bend and push and tab in. So that's what we should have. That's what it should look like. If it doesn't look like that, then you still need to chop and change slightly. Yeah, the hip skirts are also as standard, tucked inside these front skirts. They come as standard like that, which I suppose you could have them like that, but I, I really don't like how that sits. I like it all kind of being nice and tidy around his waist. Uh, but yep, yeah, that is Silver Bolt. Um, I do have a few gripes. Uh, which uh, unfortunately the uh, fans boys won't particularly like but why make him the scale that he is i, I don't really understand it uh, he's towering over the likes of prime he's only just a little tiny bit shorter 
than Motormaster. I just think he is too tall. Now, when we'll look at that when we get to the actual scale comparisons, but I don't think he really needs to be as big as he is. And he definitely doesn't need as much involved in his transformation. The complexity is ridiculous considering what he is. There are no combiner parts with this figure. Nothing actually on him physically changes to form any of the combined uh, limbs or torso piece, etc. It's going to be, from what I can gather, very much like Zeta did with a slot in job. And if that is the case, why make it overly complexing? You have to go from a robot to a jet, but you don't have to go via loads of different destinations. You can just go from A to B and make it a nice, simple, smooth transition. I do love the colours on him. A lot of people aren't necessarily keen on the metallic look that they've gone for. Some would prefer the more kind of cartoon or comic inspired colorations but no doubt we'll get another version uh, a few months down the line where they change up the colors whether you want to hold off or not it's entirely up to yourselves fans toys do seem to be in the habit of doing that they give us various different color options to keep the fans happy some want metallic some want all kind of cartoon-esque look so it's entirely up to the purchasee and other head sculpt it is really nice. Love the face on that. Uh, it does look up and down. We can go left and we can go right. Again, slightly hindered by this kind of neck tabbage in here. It's not the most agile. We have lots and lots of die cast on here as well, though. Uh, we do have a little bit of up and down motion on those shoulders. But the way that these hinge in kind of prevents any real butterfly motion there. You have to pop that back out of the shoulder and now the shoulder sits low like it did when we first got it so you have to kind of slide that back in upper bicep rotation single jointed bend on the elbow we get fully articulated hands with fully articulated fingers there is a waist rotation hip skirts do come up to the front again this is where if you don't want it to look very unnatural you can just fold the inner hip skirt in and we get this range all the way forward really nice solid ratchets there and out out to the side a little bit of a uh, clearance problems there with this panel here bring this back down and hide that off we get a nice solid bend on the knee again super tight joints in there if you don't have the knee pads in then there's also a rotation on the knee there is an upper thigh rotation and then coming down to the feet we get really solid base for our feet, these can tilt. Uh, we do get some up and down motion there. I love how this kind of tilts inwards into the toe. And depending on what you want, you can actually slide the hanger doors up on the feet. It's uh, I don't particularly like it, but I know some of the uh, some feel it's kind of closer to his cartoon representative. But uh, all in all, I think it's a gorgeous solid piece. Uh, fans toys don't ever fail to deliver. It's just, I don't necessarily think it's their best work. Give you an idea of how he scales. Here he is alongside various different uh, figures from my kind of G1 continuity. We've got MP10 over at the back there, because I know uh, some of my patrons like Nico, they have an MP10. They really like to have it kind of there for scale comparisons. Uh, we've got the TE01, my personal favorite Optimus Prime. We have Orion Pax from Black Mamba. That's the oversized version. Uh, I think that works pretty darn well. And then, of course, we have our Sea Spray and Cosmos from X Transport. And we have our Brawny from uh, Final Victory, albeit I've got his Brawny Bad Cube head on there. And here we have him alongside some of the deep purple and black figures from the Decepticon army. We have their Motormaster interpretation. And of course, our very own Fuse favorite character in the form of Skywarp. See, that's where it bugs me the most, I think, where how much he towers over the MP Seeker. And I don't have any of the Make Toys versions, but I think they're pretty much the same size, albeit they are kind of more cartoon accurate. Uh, just It's gonna be just around the corner, I'm sure, that uh, Takara are gonna give us a Seeker's kind of version three, I'm sure of it. But uh, yeah, I think he is a big boy. I know he turns into a large jet. 
Um, Motor Master, I kind of understand because he has all of that trailer kibble on the back and he turns to a really long vehicle. But I just don't really feel the need for Superion's lead bot to be that much bigger. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, he's not monstrous. I mean, he kind of comes up to the kneecap on our Zeta Superion. And I imagine they're going to stick to a similar sort of scale. Uh, but uh, do we have anything in writing yet? Do we have any definitive size for their combiners? I mean, I know I sit there manning about the scale, uh, but when you do have him alongside the Zeta version, uh, there's really not much in it. Uh, it's just that he kind of comes across as a lot bigger. I think it's due to his initial bulk and heft. Uh, Zeta still, in my opinion, is uh, more of a fun figure. It's definitely kind of more of an action figure sort of thing you can just pick up and play with. Uh, the Fans Toys is definitely kind of developed more for that adult collector ownership. You're going to pick him up, you'll mess about with him a few times, you'll transform him, transform him back, and you'll keep him in kind of one mode or the other. It's not the sort of figure you would pick up and just mess around with. In my opinion, it's just too much going on, too much complexity there, and too much that could break if mishandled. Uh, the Zeta is definitely kind of more of a pick up, play, mess around. I think uh, I've never transformed any of my combiners as many times as I have uh, personally. Out of the two, I am definitely leaning more towards how Fans Toys looks and feels, but I'm definitely not going to sell my Zeta version. Uh, I cannot afford three versions of the Fans Toys one, like some people are doing where they're having the bot mode, robot mode, and combined modes. I'm more than happy to have my bot modes, possibly, or even my fully combined mode using the Zeta and then have these as my bot because, I mean, that is Silverbolt, isn't it? Without a shadow of a doubt. Taking a quick 360 of the figure, he's still not the tidiest of bots. I don't particularly like that back kibble. That's not really G1 accurate either, uh, but it is incredibly difficult for the designers to tick absolutely every box, I think. And this part is the bit that bothers me the most. It does kind of sink down slightly, but it's still a huge back hinge, not as bad as that folded up backpack that Motormaster has, but uh, heaven forbid I should mention that. I got so much grief for saying there's something I didn't like about a Fans Toys product, uh, which is ridiculous really, because I pay for these, they cost me money, and if I want something done, I'd like it done to a standard where I'm happy, and heaven forbid I should find flaws in the almighty fans toys but <laughs> that's a story for another day uh, gorgeous coloration on silver bolts i personally really like the paint applications uh, at the same time though i still love those cartoon colors but i just don't really see the necessity for all of this extra complexity let's get silver bolt all transformed up into his jet mode uh, i do not know how to get him transformed into his torso mode. Again, Fans Toys have let nothing on with that. I know Paik managed to kind of figure out slightly how Motor Master went, but uh, I I'm not even gonna guess with Silver Bolt. I imagine it's kind of a foldy uppy job, but the instruction manual, considering it's just from bot mode to jet, I've had smaller graphic novels. I mean, it's pretty dense. I mean, that gives you the idea of the complexity. So to start the transformation off, we're gonna remove his weapon from his hand. Love the hands on these figures, really do hold the weapon in place exceptionally well. Really nice, solid piece there. You want to compress his hands down and bring the thumbs down as well. You want to straighten off these arms and bring them up to the side because we need those out of the way for now. So again, straighten that up and bring that up to the side. This back panel piece is tabbed in there. This panel and this slot here is just for his bot mode. So we don't need to worry about those. And this section here can come down and can come down. And we know that that's going to kind of form the nose cone section. Now looking at these panels here, you want to slide those out and slide those out. And this part here is going to come all the way up. And that's on a sliding hinge. So again, with this side, this is going to come all the way up. And that is on a sliding hinge, which can bring those pieces in together. 
and then we can extend these pointy little pieces as well. Move those both out of the way. And then come around to the shoulder and we're gonna unlatch that shoulder joint. So again, bring this round and just applying pressure to the underside and to the top, just unlatch those shoulders. And then coming back around to this top piece, these parts that were mistransformed when he comes out of the box, you want to just move those down. Just uh, look at this arm piece, look at this. This is all very clever indeed. This slots down and this is actually tabbed in to the torso. You want to apply a little bit of force on there to slide that out because it's a fairly substantial peg. That's going to slide around like this, move this piece out of the way. And that's going to come down and that actually rotates and that's actually kind of pretty much how it comes out of the box it comes kind of folded up over here which looks uh, pretty silly yeah, in my opinion now you want to move these panels up so again on this side once you untab from the top here this is then going to come down like so this pulls away from the torso apply a little bit of pressure there and that switches around And then this comes up and these come around like so. We're kind of left with a big chunky torso like this. And this panel here, now that we've released these tabs, this is all trying to fall away. Uh, you wanna, if you want to hold it all into place, just make sure that this metal tab here is pulled down over that next section. But I mean, we're going to need it pulled away anyway. So let's unhinge. This backpack, like me, I'm well and truly unhinged. And this is gonna come down, like so. It's a really nice, solid backpack. It's pretty good origami in comparison to their Motormaster. Now, this lower panel is on a sliding hinge. This is actually gonna slide away from the torso. It gives you a lot more room to maneuver. We're gonna fold these panel pieces in the crotch piece here is going to pop up like so that is incredibly stiff yes he has a very stiff crotch now we can bring the legs up and out to the side these sections here are actually locked into place so you want to just give these a little push and that's going to slide that joint in to the thigh. So again, on this side. And with these sections kind of wedged in now, this just drops. And it's kind of naturally wants to give him really skinny looking thighs. Now we then find out why we dropped this section out because we don't have a great deal of room to slide these in. It is a very minimal gap, but it's a gap nonetheless. And it's a gap that definitely works. And then uh, with this all nice and slim gym, uh, these can then come back down. And if we look, they slide in to this void here. Man, this is looking <laughs> really, really strange uh, proportion wise. Uh, we want to rotate this piece all the way around like so. Now I'll tell you now for free that this is a ruddy nightmare to try and pull out. So if I were you, if you can avoid locking the knees or maybe just sanding a little bit off that, I would highly recommend it because these really do not want to pull out. So I'll try and show you on here. It's just, it's meant to slide away from the kneecap. And the knee is meant to kind of extend outwards, but it is crazy, crazy stiff. So the knee doesn't kind of bend outwards, right? This actually comes outwards, like that on a sliding hinge. And to get it to slide out, you need to detach from the peg on the knee. And the peg on the knee is just wedged in there. Ah, there we go. I mean, that should not be that difficult. Uh, this is going to snap. I can see people 
breaking that if they're not careful. Fans Toys will probably release some sort of video via one of their sponsored folks saying, oh, Ben's doing it all wrong. But I'm going by the instructions, and it says to pull it out, and that is not <laughs> as easy as they make out. Uh, this hinge piece here will collapse down, so the knees now sit nice and low, like so. Slide up these hanger door pieces, and the foot is going to come up. These heel spurs are going to fold over, and these will fold in nicely. So again, fold up this lovely hanger door, bring the foot up, fold in, and fold upwards. Untap the backs of the legs. Running out of room now. And these are going to extend this panel here will come up, out, and down. And again, we've got this uh, small tip on the rear. So again, with this side, you want to just separate this panel. This is going to come down. going to rotate and that's going to slide in nicely. These are going to rotate around and we're going to push, lock and tab. These legs together at multiple points. So that once they are together, they are really together. Let's start tabbing these and tabbing those. It's nice and tight. This is going to sit nice and straight. Make sure that all of this tail section is compressed. And that's what silver bolt looks like at the moment. Uh, this is going to come backwards. Uh, so this will kind of locate around here. This will locate around here. So we've got a kind of an idea of what here's jet mode is going to look like. But for now, uh, these still kind of need to sit all the way back and just out of the way. Come back around to the front, which is easier said than done because everything's kind of falling apart now. And these panels here are going to slide out of this torso panel. And again, this side just work the panel away so it pulls out from here and here on the torso and then these just slide out on these die cast arm rods. I'm going to bring these up so that this hinge is here and that this panel is slid all the way across and this is just going to pull all the way until it locks right down on this corner, so we can see the die cast has gone all the way to the end. And if we look, there is a hinge down here, which allows this to come all the way up, rotate, and slide that in behind like that. I like how that works, that's pretty clever. So again, with this side, make sure this hinge comes up and all the way over to the front here. Uh, this panel here is then going to straighten all the way off and that's going to come in behind this hinge here and then just slide into said void. And it's easier just to show you this on the underside, but these panels that we've brought up, they're actually going to latch on to the underside of those legs, which keeps them out of the way. And this whole piece here will all line up. Lock those into position, and then with a little bit of energy on and a lot of luck, we're gonna push and just line up 
all of these panels so it's definitely worth it because the overall look of this is exceptional once we make sure that these are all open bring the arms down like so this can then come up so this is pushed down you stay down there please this comes all the way up and tabs in like so these come down to the side now you want to rotate this so this is facing downwards and then this is going to push and you want to collapse that all the way down like so so if you were tabbing it in to the shoulders again i'm going to turn these 180 degrees again turn this one 180 degrees fists are going to fold up this comes up this goes out this untabs from the back which is uh, different i uh, wasn't expecting that fist can come through the said void and then this is on a rocking hinge and as we bring that up that's just going to push and collapse into there like so this piece here then closes up this then straightens off this hinge here is going to rock like so all the way down like that and then from this position here this is going to rotate at these thighs and we have tabs on the underside here where this will locate just above those thrusters and there's also two circular tabs on the side of each of those legs just a matter of making everything line up first and then we can bring these wheels upwards so with a little bit of origami and some careful folding and tabbing in now we're now left with something that looks like this i've just folded these down into the center as well this one's quite loose on mine but right let's go to the top end and see if we can rectify this nose cone this is going to hinge like so this is then going to hinge like this and that slides down into the void and then slides back up let's make sure that's even on both sides and slide that back up like so and then just tab all of this nose cone piece in together and we can just bring this piece down and then we've got a lovely little set of wheels there as well and there we have a silver bolt as one extremely large jet he is a monster i mean that is an incredibly large concord i don't know if it's going to scale with the rest of the figures i mean it's a gorgeous alt mode but wasn't the transition there a bit complexing i mean it gets easier the more you do it and it's really difficult to show on camera because there's so many parts moving at once but uh, I, I don't think they needed to make that anywhere near as complicated as they did uh, but that may just be me but it tidies up a lot nicer than zeta in my opinion it's a lot less uh, kind of robot hanging underneath of a jet it's nice and slimline but of course it's not going to scale with your masterpiece vehicles just due to the sheer size of what concord would be and we're talking mp10 would be uh, i don't know say about that big uh, concords are absolutely ginormous uh, gorgeous planes just wish i'd had a chance to fly on one but yes this is him fully transformed up we do get some jet thrusters on the back there he's a really solid piece and once you get everything tabbed in then it doesn't really want to move but it's getting from a to b it's not exactly the most enjoyable of processes now like i said uh, there's nothing to show us how to get from here into his combined form and we're not really sure how that's going to work i just assume we're going to get an upgrade with one of their aerial bots at some point but all in all it's a very good figure it's not without its flaws complexities kind of unnecessary there's a lot of panel folding it's much the same we got with their motor master only everything kind of internal and folds out as opposed to vice versa 
But all in all, it is still by far probably the best interpretation of Silver Vault that we've had to date. Now we'll do a full comparison when we get more of these figures in. But until now, thank you all for taking your time out of your busy lives to watch my content. And thanks again to Shozy for making this review possible. Until next time, from myself and Maverick, ah, goodbye.